Greetings my friends, welcome back. Today we're going to look at this relatively new pen, Kyushido Kokari, that I was able to get in the Toronto Pen Show. The pen is actually made by Gravitas, uh, and if you look at the Gravitas website, they do mention that it is a collaboration between CY of Kyushido Pen's website. So apparently they've been working on this for a little while, and they're working on basically designing this pen, and coming up with a very unique filling mechanism that will give it a very large ink capacity. So we're going to take a look. Uh, the pen comes in this very lightweight wood box. Simple packaging, which I don't mind. The pen has a very sleek design, beautifully made. It seems like it's made of titanium on the outside, according to their description on Gravitas website. The insides are made, the inside mechanism is made of stainless steel. So let's just go through this little by little. The cap is made of titanium. It has this bump on the top. The cap is very nicely made. It's semi brushed titanium. And I can tell you based on using this for a couple of months that it's quite resistant to scratches, which I really, really like. The inside of the cap is very simple. There's no really other mechanisms in there. I do not see a breathing hole and it seems like there could be a felt lining deep inside. Uh, either way, the cap opens in about less than a turn. And capping the pen brings us to the beautiful 14 karat gold nib with their logo there. Mine has a Naginata-like grind, which is called this. The pen also comes in a variety of other grinds including needlepoint, broad, italic, fine, extra fine, double and triple stacked. The section is also made of titanium, very easy to hold. It's actually not slippery and it flares up just a little bit so that your hand does not slip like the Lamy 2000. At the end of the section, you have the thread, cap threads. They are a little bit sharp, but have never bothered me actually because the section is so large and comfortable to hold. Moving on, we get to the filling mechanism. The filling mechanism is interesting. That apparently allows for a very large ink capacity. What we do is we basically unscrew this until it disengages. We fully bring this up and then keep twisting it counterclockwise. And that unscrews the piston. They call this a pump piston mechanism. So then this disengages from the top. You now can push this in. It doesn't go all the way down, but it goes that far. And then what you do next is dip this into the ink upright. And it's like a syringe, basically fill it all up. At this point, what you need to do is this time go clockwise. And if you notice, the pump keeps screwing in and closing itself. So you turn this until it stops like this and then you can push the rod in and shut off the valve. That's definitely not how I fill this pen. Doing what they recommend, you leave maybe like a little bit of space there and you can do this again and get a little bit more ink in there. But what I do instead is I unscrew this section, unscrews quite easily. I get my syringe or the bulb or the eyedropper, fill it as far as I would like to and close this back up while upright like this so that the air is expelled. There's an o-ring there that protects it from leaking and over tightening and breaking. So that's how the pen is filled and the nib is a unit. I think this is a number six UVO unit easily unscrews and you can exchange this with a different nib. I don't know why you would do that because the nib in section on the nib unit in this is such an amazing one that it will be hard to justify changing this nib with anything else. Alternatively, if you just want to change the nib and not the section, you can just pull this out. It comes out, say a number six, uh, 14 karat gold nib. And apparently it has a nib ebonite feed according to the Gravitas website. The channel here seems 
many of other fountain pens that I've looked at. But as we shall see, this pen handles ink like no other pen I've seen, actually. It, uh, it can handle the heaviest of shimmers with no problem. Putting this back in. So the pen is back together and very easy to cap and uncap. Unfortunately, there's no clip, but you can buy one of those Twisby clips and put this on here so that it stops rolling on you. The pen feels very, very well built in hand and it feels like a very quality product when you hold it. From looking at this pen, I can't help but be reminded of the Conid Bulkfeller, which was made about a decade ago at least. Unfortunately, not available in the market for purchase, except for second hand and at a very, very hefty price. So I do not have that pen, but I've looked at several videos and pictures of that pen, and this looks quite similar. What's even more similar to that pen is actually the filling mechanism. They say that they've worked on this and in refining this piston pump mechanism for a while between Gravitas and Kyocido pens. What I highly suspect is that this is just a variation of the bulk filler system. If you look on YouTube, they have a video of how to fill your Conan bulk filler. And it's exactly, as far as I can tell, it's exactly the same mechanism as here. It may be a little bit less convoluted compared to this because they say you just keep turning it counterclockwise. Although if you do the same thing here, you just keep it counterclockwise, it will allow you to disengage the piston and start pumping ink in. So maybe somebody can correct me how this is different from the Conant bulk filler. Otherwise the pen is very, very well made. The pen itself, as I mentioned, also resembles the Conant bulk filler and it joins the likes of the Aspen P36 in resembling that particular pen. The P36 is also a very nice pen it has a nice clip and a much smaller ink capacity, of course. And this one is actually just a piston filler. It's not a piston pump mechanism. The nibs on these leave a very, very much to be desired though. So what we're going to do now is do a quick size comparison between this and a few of other usual suspects. We're going to look at versus the Asfine P36 around the same size. I would say our favorite Lamy 2000. Lamy is a little bit shorter on Blanc 149. It's a little bit shorter than day 149. This is Novel Art Original from the Galen Leather. Also a demonstrator. Beautiful pen. Rose gold. It's about the same size. Next we can look at Pelican M1005, about the same size as Pelican M1005. Pilot Vanishing Point, again about the same height. And we have Twisby Diamond 580, which is a little bit shorter compared to the, the Qsido. This pen is a lot shorter than my Kokomori dip pen, but a lot more portable than this. And the ink capacity is more compared to Pilot Pilot 845 Arushi. Pilot is a little bit longer. It's also a little bit longer. And Pilot 743 is also a little bit longer than this pen. In terms of nib size, we can compare this to the Pilot Custom 845, which the, with the number with the number 15 nib. We see that the pilot nib is much larger. Also the feet is much larger on the pilot. But I will say ahead of time that this pen handles ink 10 times better than the pilot. Any of the pilots I have actually. So um, what we're going to do next is ink this pen. I'm going to fill this pen with water to show you how the mechanism is supposed to work when how they recommend to fill the pen and then I will fill the way I fill my pen and I'll fill the pen the way I pen fill this every time so what we're going to do is add some water
as they recommend. Unscrew this, pull all the way out, keep turning counterclockwise until the piston is free. Now the piston is free, push it all the way down, put this in the ink, submerge it. That's the kind of fill you can get. And then you can turn it clockwise until it stops. And then you can push this in and call it a day. That gives, leaves you a little bit room for the ink to slosh around for you to enjoy. What I will do now is fill this with actual ink, the way I fill my pen, the way I do. Dominant Industries Lapis Lazuli. And speaking of Lapis Lazuli, It's a heavily shimmering ink. It's a beautiful blue that is not really kind on many of the pens I've used, including the Twisby Eco. Actually, Twisby Eco stopped working after a little bit. The Imagine C4 could not handle it. The uh, Opus 88 never flew when I put the ink in there. So here we go. It's our lapis lazuli. And we're gonna do a quick writing sample to see how this works. Nice, super wet. 
very very well handling of this ink i've actually tried this on several pens and none of them could handle the ink because of the presumably the heavy shimmer on the ink but this pen i've filled it several times with this lapis lazuli i'm almost out of this ink and i've used most of it in this pen and it has never had a hiccup never had a hiccup always writes with the first stroke and i'm actually quite amazed by how this line variation of course this is not a nib that's made for downstroke line variation we can get line variation by changing the reverse side of this pen is actually made to write at the needle point thinness which we're going to take a look quickly very very well handling and when even with the very heavy shimmering ink like this when writing in reverse the pen does not really have ink starvation does not run out of ink it keeps writing so i can easily use this for filling out documents and then turning it around using it for usual procedures Heavy, heavy amount of shimmer. So there we go with our writing sample. Very, very impressive. Very impressive. This... Uh, Definitely a good example of Japanese engineering, although it's not Japanese really. This pen has me very impressed with how it handles the ink and how it specifically handles very shimmery. That brings me close to the end of this review. Before I move on, I will let you know how to get this pen. The QC do pen company does not have physical stores even if you go to Japan uh, it seems like they do have the Kyusido Tokyo.com Kyusido Tokyo.com that's their website you can order this pen depending on where you are the prices differ you can also buy a version of this from Gravitas pens generally the Gravitas pens out of Europe is a lot more expensive I've found but you can do a search and see which one is more suitable this pen on the Gravitas website sells for $620. I picked this up at the Toronto Pen Show for I think it was around 900 Canadian. In the US you can get this pen ordered through the QC to Tokyo website for about 600 and after taxes it will be 620. I think that you have to pay for the shipping as well so it adds up. That brings me to pros and cons of owning this pen. Uh, first I'll go through the pros. This is an amazing looking pen. It's very very well made. The weight holding this pen tells you that it is an expensive item that you're holding. It's quality, uh, quality writing instrument. The next pro in my list is that this pen handles any ink with a lot of grace and I've never really seen a pen that can handle ink like this. Any pen, any ink you put in here from the Chiyokuro black ink all the way to Namiki black, uh, Pilot blue black, any of the Aeroshizukus and the worst pen for, nightmare for the pens which is shimmering ink and you can put the shimmering ink and enjoy the window so this is beautiful uh, so that's the second uh, pro and number three 
is that the nib on here is unscrewable and very easy to switch. For me personally, I mentioned earlier why would somebody do that and I'll give you an exact case scenario right now why somebody would do that. If you remember from recent reviews, this Magna Carta Max 600 comes with an astonishing, amazing 14 karat flex snip that rivals any vintage flex snip. The problem with this pen is that converter is a big downside for this whole pen. These are actually interchangeable, so I'm just gonna leave this here. It's going to get going very nicely. So even though I said all those good things about the Kyushido nib and feet doing so well with the shimmer and any kind of ink you put in here, one of the best case scenarios for this pen would be to put that flex nib, which is one of the best modern flex nibs in this pen, and enjoy life. This is really a match made in heaven. So this is how I've been using this pen most of the time. Even though I've used it with its original nib a lot, I feel like this combination is very amazing. Uh, anyway, so those are the list of pros. There are probably other pros that I cannot recall right now. And then let's go through the list of cons. Unfortunately, this pen is like $600 US plus shipping and plus tax. So that's prohibitive for most people. This competes with likes of Mont Blanc 146, competes with likes of Delta DV, and you can even find, if you look the right places, a Mont Blanc 149 for the same similar pricing. It is fair to argue that this is probably better built than the Mont Blanc 149. It's easier to open, easier to clean, so forth. My counter to that would be that if Mont Blanc 145 or 146, 149 breaks today. If I shatter the barrel, break the cap, I can send it very easily to Mont Blanc, their service center in California, and they can fix it relatively quickly and send it back to me for around $100, $120. What I don't know is what is the reputation of Gravitas. I've bought a pin from them, I don't even remember when, and it has not arrived. And I've had friends that purchased pen from them and it's just like hit and miss. I think it's just a one-man show or something that you order pens from them and it's just like you're at the mercy of their timing. The CY of Japan, I haven't dealt with them a lot, but I imagine if you were to, if you needed help, you have to send this pen to Japan. I have had a Namiki Emperor sent to Japan sometime last year for a leaking nib out of the box and I have no idea where it is and when it's going to come back. I know that Pilot USA is pretty good at returning your pens from what I've read online. But the point is that if you have to deal with overseas kind of customer service and service centers, that by itself is a big con in my book. Uh, therefore, the, not only is the pricing a big con, and the, the servicing of this pen. If say I drop this and the barrel breaks, that's the whole pen. I imagine that will cost most of the price of the pen to fix. Uh, what if the nib breaks? I tried to buy a nib. They don't sell nibs separately. He told me that I just have to buy. I wanted to get a double or triple stack nib from him. And he said uh, at this point they don't sell those. And I would have to buy a whole pen to get a separate nib. So uh, if you want to put your own nibs like this one that I did be my guest but if you really like this the nibs that uh, CY grinds uh, which are extremely nice very nice the best handling and the best at handling ink out of all my pens so those are worth having but at the price of the whole pen it's kind of questionable so that's one con 
uh, and also the scarcity of this pen is another problem if you go on their website many many nib sizes and shapes are available to look at but not to order many of them are sold out and to buy them you just have to know a friend who has them or who handles the sales for them and then just wait and hope uh, and wish for uh, getting one of these so, and that for that reason they are so rare to come by uh, this pen if you want for example this Naginata grind that I have that I got it is uh, you can't get it you have to just wait now because they're sold out so that's another con for this but it is a smaller and basically a startup pen company so I trust that in the future maybe they will ramp up their productions the next con in my list is that this even though I do not have a conid bulk filler, their piston pump mechanism to me looks like a copy of the bulk filler mechanism which was put out like 10 years ago. I have not handled a conid bulk filler, but I did look at their website, at the YouTube page, where they show how to fill that pen, and it's exactly the same. So I don't know what they did in terms of research and development, what difference what differences they implemented in this. I would love to learn the difference between this and the bulk filler mechanism. If somebody knows, please let me know. Uh, so those are pros and cons. Overall, an amazing pen. I would buy this again. I hope that you find this entertaining and informative. If you have any questions, please let me know. And then let me know if you're interested in this pen and if you'll be getting one of these hopefully in the future. Otherwise, I hope that you have a good day. Thank you for sticking around. Goodbye.